We were talking this morning that the car is just a tiny bit more than 100 years old, right? Yeah. And just 200 years ago was the first time lightning hit a cow and we had cooked beef. Who knew? <laughs> I know. That's Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Tomorrow is May 1st, and yes, you know what is. that means. That means the grills are all over the place. I went to Walmart, and there were unbelievable, large, unbelievably large numbers of grills, Robin. And uh-huh. I, I, I must tell you that there's something about testosterone, I think, that makes you want to buy a grill, even if you don't really expect to use it, you know. But I, I walked past those things, Robin, and I said, I got to get this. This makes fire. This cooks meat. I got to bring this home. <laughs> uh, Stephen Raisland is on the phone. It's coincidentally, we had a, a book earlier that he wrote the intro to, right? Yes. Isn't that interesting? Exactly. Uh, Stephen is hailed as the Shakespeare of barbecue. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. The host of the television <laughs> series Project Fire. Did I hear him say he was in Steam Hatching? Yeah, filming a new TV show. The Brisket Chronicles episode. is his new book. Good morning, Stephen. It's an honor to have you on our show. Well, good morning. The pleasure is mine. Ah, huh, man. What'd you have for breakfast? Uh, actually, I had uh, cream of wheat this morning. I did <laughs> not have brisket. However, it was a good question because brisket tacos uh, are uh, brisket brisket bre- breakfast tacos. I have a whole chapter on brisket breakfast, actually. And right. uh, brisket tacos is certainly a favorite. So I would like to tell you that I know what brisket is, but I don't. And I heard Robin admit to you that she just learned from your book. So Yeah. Am I, are we alone in this? Why is this one of those things we think we know, but we don't really? Well, brisket is a pair of muscles that come from the chest of the steer. Uh, they're weight, uh, weight-bearing muscles. They hold the steer up, used for locomotion. So they're very flavorful, but they're also tough, which is, makes brisket somewhat challenging to cook, especially to barbecue. However, I wrote the Brisket Chronicles to uh, walk you through step-by-step, seasoning-by-seasoning, how to make a perfect brisket every time. What was the book we had this morning, Robin? He wrote the intro to, right? Oh, yes, he did. It was did. called Steak and Cake. Have you, do you remember writing the intro to Steak and Cake? Oh, yeah, that's uh, my friend Elizabeth Carmel, right? Yeah, what a coincidence that you're both on on the same yeah. day. Wow, <laughs> just an hour apart from one another. So, um, so in her interview, we learned how to make cake and steak. In yours, we're going to learn how to make brisket, which is steak, right? Same, kind of the same thing, right? Well, actually, steak and brisket are very different, which is uh, part of why brisket is so challenging. So steak is a tender, quick-cooking meat that uh, you cook directly over the fire uh, in a matter of minutes. Brisket, on the other hand, loaded with that tough uh, connective tissue called collagen. So with brisket, you need to cook it low and slow for a period that might last half a day. Oh, really? Did you know that, Robert? No, no, I I did not. I I just enjoy it when I go to restaurants. Now, Now, what is the secret to barbecue? Is it the sauce, and is it is it always better to make your own? Well, uh, the sauce is uh, an accessory, and is not the secret to uh, ah. cooking brisket at all. The secret to cooking brisket is to work low and slow, low heat for a long time in the presence of wood smoke, which you create by adding hardwood chips or chunks to your fire. But it's really, the key to brisket is, uh, is, is patience. You know, you really need to take it slow. And uh, you gave us a, an uh, insight into your childhood because you even have a recipe from there. Well, I grew up with brisket. You know, uh, our holidays were always uh, um, crowned by a magisterial braised brisket with sweet wine and dried fruits. Uh, brisket is the meat that is used to make corned beef. Brisket is the use, meat used to make pastrami. Uh, brisket is braised in countries as diverse as uh, Italy, France, Germany. Uh, and then you jump all the way over to the other side of the world. Um, in Vietnam, the national soup, it's a beef noodle soup called pho. And guess what the meat is? is uh, you know, it's brisket. It's brisket. No way. Now, now <laughs> the book is number one in kosher cooking. Why, why is that? Why is it so popular in the kosher cooking category? Well, I think, first of all, because, you know, brisket is used to make pastrami. Um, pastrami is the classic delicatessen meat. Uh, second, uh, second of all, that braised brisket that uh, with dried fruits that I was talking about, that's a classic Ashkenazi uh, Jewish holiday dish. Uh, but, you know, brisket enters, there's virtually not a food culture on the planet that doesn't use brisket in some form or other. I love the fact that uh, you also talk about the uh, uh, different kinds of woods to use. Yeah, now, you know, 
Making brisket, it's a multi-step process. The first step is to uh, make a rub. And the basic seasoning for brisket is called a Dalmatian rub. It's uh, coarse salt and cracked black peppercorns. It gives you a white, black and white speckled effect, hence the name Dalmatian. Uh, This is what all the great brisket masters, you know, the the great great pit masters in Texas and uh, Kansas City use for seasoning. So what were you doing at Steam Hatchy? Make, uh, I know you were filming your TV show, but uh, were you cooking? Were you out, out on a boat? Where, what were you doing? Yeah, so the TV show, it's a show that's called uh, Project Fire. It airs on PBS, and uh, we were in Steenhatchie taping the show. So we were there for two weeks, beautiful set at uh, Fiddler's Restaurant, right on the water, fishing boats uh, cruising back and forth. Oh, I got really? to, ride, to ride on an airboat. Uh, yeah, it was a spectacular setting, and people were just as nice as could be. And where are you now? Uh, I'm in Miami. Oh, in Miami, which is uh, which, which is the opposite of uh, the, the the opposite end of the world. <laughs> the opposite of Steenhatchie, the culture-wise as well, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, you bet. You uh, talk about Irish spiced beef, and boy, that sure looks delicious. And the uh, 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 prep time, you know, is is hardly anything at all before you put it to cook. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, brisket, it's a funny thing. I mean, it takes a long time to cook, but uh, the actual prep is very quick. I mean, you know, even that uh, the Big Kahuna Smoke Packer brisket on the cover of the book, which takes 12 hours to cook, you're really looking at, you know, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes of prep time. So, uh, and some of the other recipes are even easier. Uh, and by the way, you know, I know in your neck of the woods, everybody is deeply into barbecue, but if you happen to live uh, in a condo or an apartment where you can't fire up a grill or smoker, there are plenty of recipes for brisket indoors from brisket soups, brisket stews, brisket hash, you name it, we have it. Really? And you, again, can you freeze brisket? I mean, like, I'm, you know, we're, there's only two of us, and if I want to make this, I want to do it so there's more than one meal. It freezes very well. In fact, I had frozen brisket for dinner last night. Oh, that's excellent. He did. In one picture, it almost looks like bacon, right? This, what is mm-hmm. this? Well, this? well, there is bacon. So uh, very often when you buy brisket at the supermarket, you get what's called a brisket flat, and it's the leaner, flatter of the two muscles. And uh, brisket flat does not have the same marbling as uh, a full pack of brisket does. So what I like to do is smoke it in a foil pan and drape the top with bacon slices. So the bacon slices melt as the brisket cooks, uh, keeping it nice and moist, giving you an extra bacony flavor. Uh, the foil pan protects the bottom from drying out, and it just gives you a terrific brisket, uh, a terrific uh, barbecued brisket that uh, will never dry out. And you also talk about the color of the smoke, that if you were preparing it right, I found that extremely interesting. Yeah, so what you're trying to do is get a thin stream of what's called blue smoke, a pale bluish color to your smoke. White smoke or black smoke indicate a fire that is either starved for oxygen or that is uh, burning too hot. And uh, you're aiming for just in the middle, you want this thin blue smoke emerging. Wow, so, I love this book. So one of the pictures, one of the recipes is for the brisket cheeseburger. Ooh. That looks yeah. really good. But I mean, is that, I mean, does that, would I notice a difference if I had that as opposed to a normal beef hamburger? Or cheeseburger? Absolutely you would. Because first of all, brisket meat has a much richer flavor than traditional hamburger meat. And second of all, because in those burgers, I like to chop up a barbecued, some barbecued brisket to add to the uh, burger meat. So you get like a double whammy of smoke flavor. By the way, that's one of the recipes in the book that can be cooked in 10 minutes or less. So not all brisket dishes require... Oh, good. So I, I'm a very noise. impatient guy when it comes to food. <laughs> yeah. We're going to start dinner right now. We'll be eating in 12 hours. That just sounds weird to me. <laughs> well, but I know a lot of your listeners are going to want to spend the time because, you know, once you can master a brisket... You are a barbecue champ, and you can cook anything if you can do a brisket. Oh, that's wow. A, that's a great slogan. Um, let's see. The Brisket Chronicles is the name of the book. Uh, Stephen, is it Raichlin? Stephen Reichlin. And Reichlin. for more information, my website is barbecuebible.com. That's B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E-B-I-B-L-E.com. Uh, I'm Stephen Reichlin on Facebook and S. Reichlin, that's R-A-I-C-H-L-E-N, on uh, Instagram and Twitter. All right. Well, next nice. time you're coming up to uh, Steam Hatchy, stop by, come into the studio, and we'll do another interview with you in the studio. I would like that. Thanks. Great talking to you all. Thank you, Stephen. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet.